Hi, today I want to show you a really cool feature in SwiftUI which is called Match Geometry Effect. Now, you can see that there's a lot of transition animations and especially when it comes to the custom ones like this one, you can see that this is using something that can be facilitated by Match Geometry because we're transitioning shared elements from one screen to another, such as the picture itself. So let's take a look at how we can recreate this in Xcode. We have two different views. We have the scroll view with this rectangle here, and then we have the rectangle for the full screen view. When I tap on this one, it's going to go to the full screen view, and when I tap again, it's going to go back. Notice that the title is also transitioning perfectly. So we're going to use match imagery effect for this. Let's start with this tutorial with a very simple setup. We have a state called show, which is going to toggle between the original screen and the full view. To simplify things, I'm going to set the untap gesture on the Z stack so I can click and toggle between the two states. First of all, I'm going to set my two screens. So if starting with show is equal to false, so the exclamation point is equivalent to that. And I'm going to put my original rectangle. I'm going to set else rectangle parentheses. And this time I'm going to use a frame. And I'm going to want to set the rectangle to take the full width with a maximum height of 400. So I'm going to set max width dot infinity max height 400. Right now, if you click on it, there's no animation going on. It's just a simple transition. What we want to do is to set a custom transition. So we're going to need to use match geometry effect. And this is going to require something we call a namespace. So add namespace var namespace. Then I'm going to go to these two screens and set the match geometry but it has to be done before the frame. So dot mass geometry effect. And this is requiring two values. The first one is the ID because you can have multiple elements that you want to transition. So I'm going to start with a shape because the rectangle is a shape. And then I'm going to set the namespace for our animation to be the same as the second screen. So before the frame, mass geometry effect, shape again and namespace. Now we're pairing these two rectangle shapes and we want them to automatically animate regardless of where they're going to be in terms of positioning and size. When I resume my preview, you're going to see that it does a perfect transition. The cool thing about match geometry effect is that I can move this anywhere in the screen and it's going to automatically transition the position and the size. So even if I put this inside an H tag and I'm going to create another rectangle parentheses and set frame with 100 height 100. So the first rectangle with the match imagery has moved a little bit to the left and yet we have the same beautiful custom transition. And even if I add, let's say a scroll view, so embed in V stack first, and change this into a scroll view, it's going to move to the top and it still animates beautifully. You might need to set the spacer because otherwise your scroll view is not going to take the full width and the scroll view having a clipped behavior is going to create some issues. But otherwise, if you set it to the full size, it's going to be perfect. Now you might be wondering, well, what happens if I have a text or a V stack? First of all, match geometry effect does not work well in a container such as a V stack and an H stack. Instead, what I would do is to set the V stack, let's say parentheses, and I'm going to set my text to title and the shape itself should be in a background. I'm going to move the rectangle shape and put that into a background modifier of the V stack and then paste that right there. 
Now I'm going to need to move my frame, otherwise my V stack does not have a size. And that's why we have this weird dimension here. And uh, my rectangle is going to have the match geometry. And voila, it works perfectly. This is where we can also set the same structure for the new view. So I'm going to apply the same technique and set a V stack with a text title and put the rectangle inside a background modifier. So I'm going to move the whole rectangle inside the content of the background. And then because my shape is going to take the maximum space, I can just move the frame to the stack instead. So now both of these elements is going to have the title element. And let me clean this up a little bit in terms of the modifiers and indentation. So now we have two views. This one has a scroll view and H stack. This one has nothing. It's just a view with a V stack and a text. We have the background shape that is going to transition from one screen to another. And that's why we have something like this. But now we have the title that should also transition from one to another. But first of all, this is black on black. So I'm going to set to foreground color dot white. Let me just copy this and put this in the full screen as well. You can see that the title does not transition. And we can add another match geometry in the same namespace, so dot match geometry. This time is going to be title and in the same namespace. Let me copy the same modifier for the end screen. And when I move, voila, both the shape and the title transitions. So to summarize, it is important to note that match geometry effect works really well on shape, text, buttons, but does not work well on the container, which is why we have to be creative and put the shape inside the background modifier. And now the shape is going to synchronize and not the stack itself with the background. So I hope you found this useful and I look forward to see what you're going to create with match geometry effect. I'll see you in the next video.